So you want a highly capable four-wheel drive ute straight off the showroom floor, but you don't want to pay that massive price tag that most of them have. This could be the ute for you. This is the Nissan Navara SL Warrior. What is effectively a fairly low specification Nissan Navara, but given all of the off-road goodies that make it a better performer off-road. Normally, you'd have to be spending big bucks on a Nissan Navara Pro 4X Warrior for all of this good stuff. But Nissan has changed the game up a little bit with this SL Warrior. And it might make a lot of sense for a lot of buyers out there who don't want the bells and whistles on the inside, but they want the bells and whistles underneath. Let's have a closer look. The Nissan Navara SL Warrior is priced from $58,000 when equipped with a six-speed manual transmission, or $60,500 with a seven-speed automatic gearbox like we have here. This pins it at around $10,000 more than a regular Navara SL. So, what do you get for your money? One of the big ticket items you get with this SL Warrior is up front, and that is a bull bar. In comparison to the Pro 4X Warrior, which is more of a, what you might call a Sahara style bar, this has the hoops on board. And I've noticed that this is really snugly wrapped around and designed around the car. That's, that's good for aesthetics, I suppose. It definitely follows the contours of the Navara, and I think this is a good looking ute. But it has to be said that there isn't a lot of clearance here. In terms of hitting a kangaroo or something like that on the road if you're going to be road touring and that sort of thing there isn't going to be much room for this to stop before it starts to go back into the car that's just a little detail worth noting and it's also worth noting that the radiator in this navara isn't right here right behind the bull bar it's actually more like about here so the cooling pack isn't exactly right in the firing line but you might get some cosmetic damage if you do hit something decent but it's good to see really good off-road clearance with this bull bar you've also got a light bar here and the bull bar does extend down into a pretty solid bash plate here. It's not bright red like the Pro Forex Warrior. That's all right, it doesn't make too much of a difference. It doesn't go faster, even though it's not red in this case. And it's a pretty solid piece of steel as well, which is good to see for off-road protection. Now, the other big ticket item here is the wheels and tires. Obviously, a lot of people will put aftermarket wheels and tires on their own vehicle if they're heading off-road, but you've got a pretty good setup here off the showroom floor. This is a Cooper Discoverer AT3 all-terrain tire. They're not a super aggressive all-terrain tire, but one of the things I really like about it is that they're a light truck construction. They're a pretty good size as well. So they're solid through the carcass. They're a bit more puncture resistant and they do offer better grip off-road and they're still pretty well composed on-road as well. So it's a nice compromise. And these tires are mounted onto a uniquely designed 17 inch wheel here. This is black because black is all the rage at the moment. These ones are a little bit brown and muddy at the moment. Forgive me for that. And these are used in the Pro 4X Warrior as well as this SL Warrior. You'll also notice that there are no side steps on this SL Warrior. And that's not a bad thing really. Access into it for people who aren't as mobile as they once might have been could be a little bit tricky because this Navara does sit a little bit higher up off the ground. But in terms of off-road clearance, I don't mind not having side steps because they do eat into that sill clearance there. Although it's worth noting, if you do start hitting the sills in this case, you're gonna be doing damage straight away. So you have to watch out for that sort of thing. And there's a few more details to cover off around the back, including the suspension, which is a big one. So let's have a look. One thing that you might not have noticed, or maybe you did, is the redesigned tow bar on this Warrior. That's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, they want to fit a larger spare tire under the back here. That's an underslung spare. It's a full size spare as well. They haven't scrimped in that regard, which is good to see. And this tow bar also offers a bit of extra off-road ground clearance at the back here, which is good to see. Now the big ticket item, I did say the bull bar was a big ticket, but I think the suspension is also a very big ticket item in this regard. It's a little bit tricky to see. You do need to get down and underneath a little bit, but Nissan has used Premcar to replace the springs and the shock absorbers on this Navara SL Warrior. And it is the same as the Pro 4X Warrior. And it adds a very different driving dynamic to this Navara overall. The springs are a progressive rate. They're lifted up. They're a little bit softer overall than the standard Navara. And the shock absorbers have been tuned specifically for this application by Premcar. And they're a bigger shock absorber as well. So they're a bit more durable for hard off-road usage. And one final point, is that the bump stops have changed as well. So this is almost a little bit like a Ranger Raptor, but not to the same extent. Those bump stops do help this thing add a little bit more compliance when it's working really hard off-road. It doesn't have the really fancy off-road suspension. This is more of a standard 
aftermarket setup almost, but it is tuned really well. But this does perform quite well, as we will find out a bit later. The Warriors treatment doesn't affect the Navara's 3.5 tonne braked towing capacity, and this SL Warrior maintains a payload of just over one tonne. SL spec means that this Navara does away with some of the fancier trinkets that a more expensive Pro 4X model enjoys. Here we've got vinyl floors, cloth seats with manual adjustment, halogen headlights, no keyless entry or push button start, and no sports bar in the tub. The SL Warrior also misses out on extra tech like a 360 degree camera, some active safety technology and a few other details. And if you want the full rundown of specifications, head over to drive.com.au. So here's the interior of the Navara SL Warrior. As you would expect, this isn't a place with lashings of leather and electric adjustment and all of that sort of thing. This is a fairly basic grade four wheel drive ute, but for mine, this does the job pretty well. And it's not really that far behind other more expensive grades of Navara. So some things you don't have here, you don't have electric adjustment and you don't have any sort of seat heating or leather trimming or anything like that. These seats, cloth, basic and manual, but like other Navaras, this is ergonomically a little bit flawed. And it's a hint that this is a relatively old ute in the segment. There's no reach adjustment in the steering column, only tilt. And the amount of adjustment available in this driver's seat is a little bit on the low side for my liking. The seat position just feels a bit high. You can't drop it down as much as you might like. And there's not a whole lot of under thigh support either. You do get comfortable when you're driving this car and you don't tend to notice it after long drives, but it's definitely a little bit behind the game in that respect in comparison to other utes. One thing that is good in this ute though is the infotainment display. This is a new system that Nissan put in the Navara not too long ago. You don't get the 360 camera, you don't get digital radio, you don't get navigation either in this system, but you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and an operating system that is fast to load, fast to react and nice and easy to use. So that is a plus for me. Manual air conditioning controls. Yes, this is a basic ute, but hey, they do the job just fine. And then in terms of storage, you've got a spot here and a spot here on the side as well for small stuff, maybe change or a wallet, something like that. Two cup holders and a small center console here. But inside, it's not really that good for storage. It is quite small, but you've got a USB-C, USB and 12 volt power outlet there. So that's almost your power hub for in this car. And it's backed up with a 12 volt and a USB up the front there, plus an auxiliary audio input. Maybe you're gonna bring your iPod along or something like that on the next road trip. But this ute, does the job pretty well. I do like rubber flooring in a four wheel drive ute, especially one like this Navara that's gonna be going off road. This thing is gonna get muddy and dirty and all that sort of thing. And that's a lot easier to keep clean and well maintained in comparison to carpet. The second row of the Navara SL Warrior is mostly on par with the rest of the segment for space and comfort. There are air vents in the back here, but no USB power outlets in this specification. And in keeping with the Warriors ready for action mentality, the tub is fitted out with a standard drop-in tub liner. Although there is no power outlets here and that sliding tie down rail in more expensive variants is missing here as well. Under the bonnet is the same 2.3 liter four cylinder turbo diesel engine, which uses two sequential turbochargers to make 140 kilowatts and 450 Newton meters. That runs through a seven speed automatic gearbox and low range transfer case. The four-wheel drive system is part-time and that rear differential has a locker. One of the major advantages you get with this Navara in terms of the suspension setup is the fact that it's been tuned and calibrated specifically for this Navara by a bunch of people called Premcar in Australia. And Premcar happen to know what they're doing when it comes to things like suspension and chassis tuning. So things like a suspension lift, bigger dampers, all that sort of thing, bigger tires, that all helps for general off-road capability. If you've got more ground clearance, you've got more grip, you can go more places. But there's another advantage here that is really important, I think, for this Navara, and it's just about its decorum and the way it travels across dirt roads, rough surfaces, anything other than a smooth highway. It's got a better feel and a better nature to it than a normal Navara does, and I think that's a really important point to make. If you're buying a four wheel drive ute and you want to go out into the rural areas of Australia, you want to drive up and down dirt roads, you want to do some hard off-roading, but you want to just cover long Ks and do it comfortably, or 
Maybe you just live in a place where the roads are rubbish and you're always driving on unsealed surfaces or rough surfaces. This has a really big advantage over a normal Navara. It's got a nice feel through the steering. It handles bumps nicely. It's just a lot better overall, to be honest. And it's a bit of a shame that this Navara is nearing the end of the road and it's only just now getting to its best position overall. It would have been great if we actually had this back in 2015 when the Navara first launched. The 2.3 litre twin turbo diesel, it's a good operator. It feels punchy and talky, fairly responsive off the mark and it gives decent performance. And it's matched well to this seven speed automatic gearbox, which is good most of the time. You do get some funny things happening off-road and we'll get to some off-road performance a little bit later when we put this Navara to the test. And I'll see what this engine is like as well. From previous experiences, we know that it does start to feel a little bit breathless on the highway under heavy loads. If you're towing or trying to overtake up a hill, something like that, it does feel perhaps not as powerful or talky as some of the others in the segment, but for the most part, it's a good powertrain. Now there is one point to make with this Navara Warrior and it's worth consideration for most buyers out there. This is not a unique thing for the Nissan Navara. You can get something similar to this, but from the aftermarket instead of from Nissan. And you might do it a little bit cheaper than what this Navara does. This is about $11,000 more expensive than a standard SL Navara. So you'd have to get your calculator out. You'd have to make a lot of phone calls and see what sort of gear you can get installed and all done professionally and properly and see what the price comes at there. Now, your mileage may vary in that regard. You might not get suspension that is as good as what you've got here and the quality of the gear, well, it all ranges from good to not so good. So you have to really sweat the details in that regard. The advantage of this Navara is that it's ready to go. There are no implications with the warranty or any of that sort of thing. And you can pick it up off the showroom floor and head straight out into the bush. So the Navara has done quite well so far out in the bush, but we haven't thrown a proper challenge at it yet. And just so happens that there is one right behind me here. This is a fairly tough hill. There's a few really tricky sections, big rock steps, and a few really slippery shaley sections as well. So it's gonna be a good test to see how this car goes. I've aired the tires down. I'm gonna stick it in low range and I'm gonna use that rear diff lock as well. Cause I reckon I'm gonna need it. This is a fairly gnarly hill actually, but let's see how the warrior handles it. The advantages of the Warrior here are quite plain to see. A 40mm suspension lift, which is coupled with larger diameter tyres for even more ground clearance, gives you a lot of room to play with in this sort of terrain. And the bull bar and tow bar also offer better angles for rock steps like these ones. Coil springs at the back feel supple and well balanced for this kind of driving. And the overall design, along with a nice flat differential design, offers good ground clearance as well. The tyres did a good job of finding traction on the looser surfaces of this climb. And the gearing of the Navara, it's got a crawl ratio of 44.5 to 1 by the way, feels really nice for this kind of driving. Although, the transmission calibration, which doesn't let you select first gear in low range without coming to a complete stop, does get a bit infuriating after a while. Well, I've got to say, if I had a hat, I would take it off because this Navara did really well for that hill climb that we just took on. There were two distinct sections there, very challenging ones, both of them. That first one, I thought, yeah, it had a pretty good chance to do it. And it just walked it up quite easily, actually. I thought we might have had to adjust our lines a little bit, adjust our throttle and that sort of thing, but it, it made it up quite easily. This second one here, even more challenging again. We did bottom out at times there. The diff copped a little bit of a rub and so did the control arms, but overall, this ute was very good. Clearance is good, traction is good, all of those important matters. And that 2.3 litre turbo diesel in low range has a nice response at the bottom of the rev range there, which does really help it crawl through low situations, low speed situations like these. So very, very good for this Navara SL Warrior. In terms of a dual cab ute off the showroom floor that is very capable, this is up towards the top of the field.
Well, any vehicle that takes you out to a beautiful location like this in the bush is a good car in my opinion. And that's what this Navara in SL specification with the Warrior treatment has done today. And I think it speaks to the strengths of this vehicle as a general camping, four wheel driving and adventure car for the Australian families today. This doesn't compete with a Ranger Raptor and I don't think it really wants to either. That's not the main strength of this car. It doesn't have the same sort of technology underneath. It definitely doesn't have the same technology inside. This is quite a basic and stripped out vehicle when you compare it to other four wheel drive utes. But that might suit a lot of people really nicely in terms of what they want out of their four wheel drive. They don't want all the bells and whistles, but they do want better suspension, better wheels and tires, and better capability off the showroom floor. And that's the strength of this Navara SL Warrior. It comes in at a lower price, but it brings all of those good things. And it's still got three and a half ton towing and a good solid payload to boot. So if you want something that is a bit of an all rounder, but doesn't have those bells and whistles, this Navara is definitely worth a look. If you've enjoyed this video and you wanna see more four wheel drives out in the bush getting tested out, give us a thumbs up because that gives us good feedback and we can come out and do more of these videos. And let us know in the comments below, do you rate this Navara SL Warrior? or would you buy a different ute for the same sort of asking money? And the last point, make sure you are subscribed to Drive on YouTube because we do a lot of videos like this and we wanna keep you up to date with all of the latest stuff we do. So make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.